Hello world of YouTube and witchy community. I am here, I'm the student witch, and I'm here to do the intuitive tag. I know I'm kind of late jumping on the bandwagon with this one, but um, I'm too lazy to do the 77 questions tag. <laughs> and this one only has 15 questions. So let's jump right in. Question number one, what was your first paranormal experience? Um, the first thing that comes to my mind was when I was five, somewhere between five and seven years old, and I saw some sort of small creature come out from under, under my bed. It was green. It was probably about the size of my hand. Um, and the only thing I can think of is that it's some sort of like brownie, what some people would call a brownie, what the heathens might call the whites, or some sort of house elf, or something like that. Um, that's the first sighting. <laughs> uh, number two, have you ever had a premonition? Yes. The problem is, I didn't listen to them until recently. <laughs> um, and I figured out that in order to listen and pay attention to your premonitions and trust them, you have to have self-confidence as a person and as a witch or magical practitioner. And I didn't have that until recently. So yay me. I'm awesome. Um, first tarot deck. The first tarot deck I ever bought, I just randomly got it off of Amazon. <laughs> It was in May, this past May, um, and it was just the traditional Rider Waite tarot deck. But then, a few months later, I actually inherited my grandmother's tarot deck. So, that's awesome. Uh, what's your favorite element? I love them all. <laughs> For all sorts of reasons, and it kind of depends on my mood. Like. If I'm really struggling to finish a project, I think of fire and like the fire of the will. Um, if I need to do some serious spiritual cleansing inside and out, water. Um, if I'm thinking about esoteric knowledge or if I'm trying to learn the philosophy of the craft, air. And if I'm trying to grow and sustain something, earth. So, I love all the elements. Um, I know I'm a Sagittarius, so technically I'm a fire sign, and I think my lack of patience is kind of a sign of that. <laughs> it's one of the things I need to work on. Um, so maybe fire might, might be more prominent than the others, but in general, I love them all. Um, do you believe in fairies? Um, not the whole like Victorian image of like little beings with wings fluttering around flowers, not necessarily that, but I do think there are other conscious entities um, that may or may not reveal themselves to us at different times for different reasons, like the little house spirit thing that I saw when I was a kid. Um, uh, do I see spirits or beings? Uh, I have. The problem is, whatever sightings I've had, they were all involuntary. Um, but again, I'm a fairly new witch, so maybe that's just because I lack the practice and I haven't had the time to sit down and just meditate and practice seeing them. Um, but yeah, when I was a kid, and even into adulthood, I would see uh, spirit animals that weren't really there. Like, I've, when I was a kid I saw a mountain lion and as a kid I was growing up in Kentucky and there are no mountain lions in Kentucky. <laughs> and when I blinked it disappeared so it just showed itself to me um, very quickly. I saw a really scary black dog charging at me when I was in college and again I blinked and it disappeared. Um, I saw the little house elf thing when I was a kid. I have seen a human ghost before. I was in high school and I saw it at the exact same time that my best friend saw it. Um, and oh, I had this weird astral projection thing, or at least 
the label astral projection is the closest it's the closest thing I can think of as to how to begin to describe that experience. Um, and again, it was completely involuntary. I was, this just happened about three or four years ago. I, um, I went to bed, it was like a random Tuesday. I started having a dream that I was driving uphill on this old kind of abandoned country road. And as soon as I reached like the top of the hill, all of a sudden, I opened my eyes, and I was not in my bed anymore. I was flying upwards into the night sky. Like, I didn't see my ceiling anymore in my bedroom. I saw the night sky. And it was full of thousands of stars. And then the stars started moving and forming, like, human-like faces, and they were smiling down upon me. I have no idea what that was. Astral projection is the best thing I can come up with to describe it. <laughs> um, yeah, and it just randomly happened at like 4 o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday. So, <laughs> that happened. Uh, so yes, I do see spirits or beings or whatever the hell that was. Um, would you rather fly on a broomstick, breathe underwater, make things grow fast, or control fire? Definitely breathe underwater. Um, and maybe this is like the part of me that's more attracted to the water than it is to the fire, kind of balancing that out. Um, when I was a kid, I used to actually have dreams that I was breathing underwater. And the dreams were like somewhat lucid because within the dream, I would realize I was underwater and I would realize that I was breathing and I knew that that just couldn't happen. Something strange was going on. Um, but I loved the dreams. I wasn't scared or anything. I would just... It was one of those dreams that I would have like every two weeks or so when I was younger. Um, and it just felt so liberating and peaceful. Anyway, what's my animal totem? A female white-tailed deer. I fucking love deer. I've eaten them, I've hunted them. I mean, I've never shot at one, but I went hunting with my dad a few times. We never saw one, but um, I've tracked deer. It's kind of a weird hobby, but when I was in, in college, I used to go into the woods with my friend and I would teach her how to track deer and we would always find the deer trails and find evidence like scat and hoof prints and tree scratchings. It's weird. It's like a weird talent I have. Maybe in a past life I was a deer. But also my personality kind of matches up with a deer. Um, I'm very introverted. I'm more like I'm going to stand back behind the crowd and just observe and calculate kind of like a deer does. Um, maybe that's just because they're prairie animals. But also deer have kind of popped up in my life in times when I, I feel like I've needed a message. Um, yeah, so definitely a deer, a doe. Um, so that kind of answers the next question. My first animal or spirit totem, it's always been a deer. I've always, even when I was a little kid, <laughs> this is kind of embarrassing, but I used to run around on all fours and pretend, I either pretended I was a dog, or depending on the day, I felt like pretending that I was a deer. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I love tracking them. I have a natural gift to just look and find their trails in the woods, because I kind of like put my mindset in as if I were a deer. It's kind of weird. Okay, um, first spirit guide. Um, I feel like between all the weird animal spirits I've seen, usually in, wood, in the woods, um, and the weird astral projection thing, and the weird animal sightings thing, animal communication thing, I just, it's hard for me to pin down one singular spirit guide because most of the spirits or entities that I've seen were not human, like not human ghost or whatever. However, 
there are two occasions in which um, the communication was with a human and that was with the spirit of my grandmother. She came to my dreams twice. Once was once when I was in college and once when I was in grad school. Well, I still am in grad school, but in my master's program a few years ago. So I guess I'm going to say my grandmother um, would be my first definitely human spirit guide. Um, Number 13, do I feel more connected to the stars or to the earth? I would definitely say the earth, even though the astral projection thing, like, launched me into the stars. <laughs> Maybe I just haven't discovered my connection with the stars yet. But for now, I'm going to say the earth. Um, I always love having my hands in the dirt. I grew up gardening. I'm fairly good at growing plants. I lack some experience, but right now I can't have a garden because I live in apartments. Um, but I grew up in a rural area, you know, surrounded by cows and pigs and stuff. So that kind of agricultural aspect of the earth, um, the fertility of the earth, growing up where there were more trees than people. Um, yeah, definitely the earth. Um, preferred method of blessing or cleansing? I, I think my preferred method, and again, I'm still fairly early in my practice, <laughs> but my hands, like in focusing my energy, um, I know tools are great, like sage or incense or salt. You know, but ultimately, I think it just comes down to like your hands, your mind, and your heart, and lining those things up. Um, and I just I I feel more powerful when I'm just doing things directly with my hands. Um, so, and then last but not least, what color do you feel spiritually connected to? Um, well, ever since I was a little kid, the color yellow was always my favorite because I just feel like it's a kind of positive energy, um, with it, but I, I also have been working a lot with really deep purples and deep blues because for some reason that color just... I use it to symbolize the intuition, the subconscious, shadow work, that kind of thing. So, yeah, yellow and purple so far. So yeah, that's my quick little intuitive tag. I know this was like a thing a few months ago on the witchy community on, on um, I almost said Facebook, on YouTube. <laughs> uh, so I'm a little late with my my version of it but there you go this is a quick easy way for you guys to get to know me a little bit until next time many blessings and enjoy your what day is it monday <laughs> bye